access. So. Okay, just one minute, please. Uh, I'm setting up to televise. Just okay. give me a second. Okay, okay, thank you. It's the most critical part of the setup. Got it. Okay. Okay. Hello, is there something somebody want to talk about? Is that you, Frank? Yes, that me, Frank Patrick. Yeah, are you a resident in uh, Tanzania? Yes, I'm a resident in Tanzania. Uh, okay, uh, and Zoom is going to be here, right? Yeah. Yeah, he'll he he's gonna run the this webcast. Uh so he'll determine, you know, what happens. Did you wanna okay. say something? Did you wanna say something? No, there's just a case of brainstem tumor of which we have struggled uh, on how we can manage this child. Okay, what else? Um, yeah. What else? What on, else? On, only that, and the main uh, the main objective is to ask for an opinion on what we should should we should we done next to, to this child. Oh, okay. oh, excellent, excellent. One case or more? Only one case. Only That's one fine. Case. That's fine. That's fine. That's a start. Yeah. Uh, okay, Frank. Uh, I'll be back. I'm gonna get ready. And we started in about twenty minutes. Okay. 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 Are you sure you you present a case? Are you are you sure of how to do it? PowerPoint and everything. I, I will present the case. Oh, are you gonna do use a PowerPoint or just describe it? PowerPoint and I have just one slide of a PowerPoint and I have a image MRI image. Okay, yeah. so you know you know how to use PowerPoint, right? Yeah, maybe you can. Uh... So let's test it. Some... Let, that's what I'm trying to get at. Let's okay. test it. If okay, you want to yeah. test it, we can do it now. I think I want to test it. Okay, let's do it. Well, you only have a million people watching us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, really, it's live on YouTube. <laughs> Those that are interested or bored or both. We're just setting up for Tanzania. Talks in 20 minutes.
Are you there, Frank? Hello. I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Are yes. You, I'm are, here. Are you gonna Are you gonna try to to share the PowerPoint? Uh, still, there's no uh, on my task, but there's no any place where I can share. There's only chat, raise hand, Q and A, and show caption. So there's no part where okay. I can share. Okay, is there yeah. share screen? There's no share screen option. Uh, no, not that option. Okay, how do you how do you expect to show us the slides? Is there so, some way you, you know how to do it? Uh, I, I just hope that you can allow me, you can give me well, an access. Well, why don't you, can, can you open it right now? Open it right now on your computer. Open the, open the image. Okay, done. I've, I've already opened the, my slide. Okay, can you open it and can you share it on your screen? That is the part where I cannot do because... Uh, uh, I don't have that access. Okay, you need to uh, download a new version of Zoom. Okay, oh. and I'm going to give it the address, okay? Okay, okay, okay. You know, first of all, you're not even in. Uh, I tried to admit you, but you, but you, for some reason, oh, hold on. I think, I think you're in. Oh, you're in, you're in. Yeah. No, in. no, 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 you're not in. That's why you, you can't see your screen. Because you're not even admitted. No, I asked you to come in. You got to come in. A lot of people I... get the invitation and they say, "No, I don't want to come in." Join as a panelist. Okay, you need to come in the panel. Okay, when you get the option, it's going to ask you to come in the panel. Just say yes. There you go. Okay, now you're in. Now you should be able to. Share your screen. Do you see this? You see the share screen option now. Frank, you're on mute. Yes, now I've joined uh, in a panel. Oh, okay. So let's see. Let's see if you can. Sh can you share? Is there a share screen option at the bottom? Yes. Let me try to share my screen. <laughs> See, this this is good. But otherwise, we would have done this in the middle of the conference. Okay, there. Okay, you got three. Yeah. Okay, so that's you're all set. You know how to do it. That's fine. So it's okay. Uh, yes, it's fine. Okay, okay let me okay. see your face. Let me see your face. Take take okay. the, uh, share screen and take it off, and I need to have your face on the camera. Okay. Because we want to know who you are, and you have a face. Yes. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's important. Yeah. The image is important. You're starting yeah. a career. You're starting a career. Or like it or not, you're stuck with your face. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyways, yeah. Uh, okay, good. You're, you're all set, and welcome. Uh, make sure Juma is coming in, and he's all set, okay? Yeah. Okay, I'll be I'll be back. Yeah, thank you, thank you a lot. Sure.
Hello, John. Hey, how are you? how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, thank you. Good, I'm going to make you a uh, co-host, okay? I think I'm a panelist. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, you're a co Because that, that allows you to let people in. Oh, uh, okay, cool. You know how to do that? Mm, maybe yeah, I have go, Yeah, go go to the right. There's You should have attendees and panelists. Um, I see whiteboard post who can in okay. So like, it's in the webinars chat part on the right hand side. Uh, under in yeah, whiteboard, yeah, click, click on participants at the bottom participants. Okay, do you see that? You should have that as co-host. Participants at the bottom of the Zoom screen. One second, Pros. Uh, I have a call from Ramdas. Hello, hello, Ramdas. Hello. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, you left. Uh, uh, now there is an online webinar. Uh. Sir, I will. I will give you a call uh, after the webinar. I uh, we have a webinar now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. I will do it. Okay. So, uh, uh, right bottom, I see uh whiteboards. Is that what you mean? No. I think, yeah. It, it says chat, share screen, participants. Chat, share screen, record, question, answer. Ah, uh, participants. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Click, click on that, and you'll okay. see you'll see the participants, and you should be able to allow them to enter. Now go to the three dots to the right of their name. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the right upper upper portion of your screen, webinar chat. You should have access. To let people in. Okay, so I uh, I have this. Um, so when I open the participants box, I okay. see the option invite. Oh no, it's just an invite option. Yeah, op open up those three dots, and it gives you uh, the option to uh, allow the patient, allow the person to enter. So that's how you let people in. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I I informed. Uh, did you contact uh Professor Ipe today? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I did. Uh, he knows. He well, knows. I tried. No, but he hasn't answered back. Ah. Oh, okay. Because I I texted him too and. Uh, he hasn't answered me back either. I'll just give him a call one second. One second. Yeah, please. Where's I? So, um, yeah, is I, I, I was here. Ah, perfect. Thanks, Afsil, for reminding me. I was just uh, going to retire for today. So uh, I was thinking I missed something, but uh, let me just uh, 
I mean, when do you want me to start, John? Hey, I, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, Where's I it? can't see your camera, though. Uh, I don't know what's wrong. Um, hey, I admitted you. Let me make sure, make sure I admitted you. Yeah, your camera looks like it's connected. It is showing some something with virtual background or something. Okay. Anyway, uh, if you tell me to start, I can just start sharing my screen and then we'll see how it is. Okay. Okay, let's do that. Okay, 10, 9, 8. Uh, let me uh, actually pin mine. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from beautiful, sunny Miami Beach. Uh, we have the pleasure of televising the uh, Tanzania Neurosurgery Grand Rounds with Jumon Wagogo, local neurosurgeon from uh, Tanzania. And Ibe Cherian is going to basically run the show today. And Ibe Cherian is a well-known neurosurgery educator from India. He's, and he's holding this series down in Tanzania. Welcome, Ibe. It's all yours. Okay, guys. Uh, good uh, afternoon or good evening. Uh, I'm very glad to have my fellow Afsal here. Afsal uh, has been with us for some time and... Uh, Whatever cases I'm going to show, um, Afsal has been part of these surgeries. And uh, day before yesterday, we had an aneurysm, which was interesting. We had a complex uh, ACOM with a single azygos uh, A1 and uh, completely turned uh, uh, A2s. So we went ahead and clipped that. There was intraop rupture, but... Uh, there were no problems. We went ahead and uh, clipped it and the patient is completely okay. And I'm yet to receive the video. So what I thought is I'm going to show you something very interesting. So which we did uh, last week. So I'll just share my screen. Um, can you see this picture? Uh, Everybody? Yes. yes. Right. So what do you see here? I mean, I'm going to ask people around, I mean, as to what do they see here and why exactly would very few people would want to operate on this case? I mean, why is it that uh, it's not a, it's not any usual tumor. And uh, this, this is a 21 year old boy who had not much deficits. Uh, so he came to us walking and uh, we hope He's now standing up, so we we hope we can send him back walking as well. But uh, uh, this is the case. And uh, you see what's happening here. You see this lesion. If you see this lesion, it's uh, very irregular. It's indenting. It's got a, uh, you know, it's the brainstem. It's, uh, there are indentations on the brainstem. It's a cervicomedullary junction. You see, that's a pons, that's a medulla. And from the lowermost border of the fourth ventricle is starting. So it's a cervicomedullary lesion, which is, you know, which is taking up almost all of the cord here. You know, this cord is only 1.8 millimeter thick. This cord at this place is only 1.8 millimeter thick. So it's a, it's going to be an uphill struggle. So once the tonsils are out, from there to up to V to up to the C2, we took up to the C3 actually. We had to take up to the C3. So to see this, and this is what we went and operated. Any comments, any questions at this point? Juma, are you there? Yes, uh, Professor Ipe, I'm there. Yeah. Would you see, this is not a case which, uh, uh, which a lot of people anywhere on the world would do. So, um, you know, 
what why why would anybody not do this case if uh, you're doing it what are the difficulties what about the brainstem edema here and what are the planes like so what would you expect when you open it is it would it be a normal uh, very suckable tumor i'm not giving you titus but i can uh, tell you one thing give me a second guys give me a second please um, i would ask you to just formulate your questions and i can hear them i'm just uh, getting a phone call Okay, guys, so any questions? Afsal, you want to ask a question, man? Imagine it comes to your clinical practice. I mean, let's say if you're in Germany and it comes to you. I mean, I'm telling you, you'd be one of the very few guys in Germany who'd, uh, you know, even think of uh, taking it out. Forget taking it out. You'd be one of the very few guys because you've seen how it, these are things are done. And um, it's a, uh, how much of a good surgeon you are here, the decision, a lot of decision is electrophysiological, intraop electrophysiological. And uh, without that, don't even think of doing this. I, I Generally, I don't use electrophysiology for anything. But this is a case where I cannot, because I got to look at the 12th nerve, got to look at the motor tracks. And uh, because the, the brainstem is only 1.8 millimeter thick here. And I need to take out this tumor as much as possible. I can't come out, come out doing a biopsy. I need to take as much as possible because there's only one chance that I get here. So... And um, you, it's a 21-year-old boy who's walking and talking and is completely okay. And it's, it's not like he's on a ventilator already. So cannot go and create more deficits. Uh, so Juma, Afsal, anybody who's participating, I would appreciate any kind of questions here. You're muted. You're muted, man. So if I... Um, had to confront such a patient um well um i would in 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 fact go for a decompression of the medulla and the cord because um his uh, he's neurologically still intact to provide him a better quality of life um uh i wouldn't dare to go radical on this tumor because uh, I mean, uh, I uh, that's uh, that's how I'm trained, and I also, I mean, now I know that it can be different, of course. Um, I, I were would, you there for this surgery? Were you there for this surgery? Uh, not for this case, but for a very similar case of a young boy from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah. That, so that, well, that that is another case. So, but this one, we went really radical. I mean, you will see it very soon. Uh, you will see how we went about it. So, let us start off here. You seeing my screen? Sir, sir. It's in 3D, so it's going to be a bit, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be two pictures. So, can you see the cerebellomedullary junction there. So this is where the tumor is. This is exactly where the tumor is. Okay, so we, um, with navigation, we confirmed it. And, you know, the tumor is uh, till around here from all the way from here. So we're going to open the the arachnoid first over the tumor so that we can clearly see if there is any differentiation. But, you know, it was crazy that we really couldn't see much differentiation. So that's a tonsils. And this is the, this is the 
uh, superior limit of the tumor. You can see if you see the scans, you can see the tonsils are the superior limits of the tumor. Uh, you're going... Uh, you're going to take this tumor out. So for that, obviously, you need a... Um, a medullary and a myelotomy split. So, you know, underneath the fourth ventricle, if you know what are the things, what are the nuclei. So, underneath the fourth ventricle, you have the nucleus ambiguous. So, you you are not going to go midline there, but after that, you can start from the gracilis. You can start your midline and then you undercut and go go there to the tumor in, in the medulla. So that's that's exactly what I did here. So we're going to open this. And a very high zoom, of course. And the thing is, the strangest thing is that when I opened... This was so firm. It was so firm. It was uh, like it was a calcified, you know, meningioma. It was so firm. You know, um, I've seen a lot of brainstem. I mean, one of my pet areas is brainstem. But uh, when you see a tumor like that, which is uh, so firm, you would really not want to mess with it. Because in a child with a 21-year-old boy and uh, uh, you're thinking tuberculoma, you're thinking... A uh, lot of other things, but the, the, the thing is, the f fact that it is very firm and vascular, we were worried because uh, we were, of course, thinking about pilocytic, but then there was no plane at all, absolutely no plane, no variations within the tumor. It was just one firm tumor with absolutely no differentiation. So this was what I saw first. I mean... Would you guys want to tell me what you would do at this point? Anybody? You see how this tumor is? It's not like an intramedullary tumor at all. It's, it's like really firm. Very, very firm. You guys I'll want to comment? If I see like this, maybe I'll just take the biopsy for this case, do as minimal as possible and leave the patient because I'm, I'll be afraid of uh, retracting a lot or taking a lot of the tumors. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a very, very wise decision. If you take a biopsy and then come out, that would be a waste, very wise decision. But then, you know what? Uh, I understood that this was something benign. Obviously, it is something benign. And I can see uh, under very high magnification, I can see that the tumor, I can differentiate the tumor from the normal because it's very easy for me to differentiate. So when it is firm, of course, uh, it's an opportunity loss for you for tumor resection. But it's another opportunity for you because you can clearly understand the planes here because this is extremely firm. And when you come to a tissue which is not so firm, compressed, you can, you know, you understand that this is, I can do it blind. You know, I can do it blind because the feel, I can just have the feel this is very important, you know. So with the scissor, when I cut, I have the feel and now I know exactly from where to where the tumor extends. Because I get the feel when I each sub millimeter that I touch, I'm using that touch now to differentiate this tumor, okay? So definitely it's an opportunity lost for me because I'm not going to sit and cry, oh, I would have loved a suck suckable tumor. That's what I would have expected. If it's pilocytic, I would have expected a gel gelatinous tumor. I mean, that would have been fantastic. Yes, that would have been fantastic, but uh, obviously it is not that. So I cannot sit and cry over this. I, I, but the advantage that immediately in my mind that came to my mind was that this is a tumor I can do blind because the differentiation is so, so marked here. I know exactly where's the tumor now. 
So I'm pretty bold out there and I go uh, and I and I keep taking the tumor out there. Right, so let's come to this part. So you see, <laughs> I'm emptying out the brainstem. And I'm going just by the field. You see how much tumor I'm taking? Can you guys see? Yes, you can see it. Yeah, can you see how radical I'm going? Yes, sir. This is the QSA. This is the QSA. So it's a QSA. With the QSA, I'm finding out where's the tumor versus where's the... You remember, I have only 1.8 millimeter of brainstem there. So, I mean, uh, it would be suicidal to just go fast with the QSA because uh, it's going to be, I'm going to be just touching. I'm going to be just touching with the QSA. I mean, if you go very fast with the QSA, very soon, sometimes if you are not careful, you just go through the brainstem, you know, that would be disastrous. And it's 1.8 millimeter. It's so easy to go do that, you know. So here, I am just going by the feel and you see, that's all tumor. And you see, I'm, I'm going completely radical here. I'm feeling with my suction how's the, how's the brainstem, I mean, how's the feel. And I'm keeping on taking it out. I can assure you, uh, Unless you've got extensive experience with brainstem, we will show you. We have a huge series of these so-called inoperable tumors. I mean, I think one of the other guys who's got this kind of brainstem experience would be Charlie Tio. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we love these brainstems because uh, these are dangerous. You know, you cannot make mistakes here. You make a mistake, this patient is doomed. I mean, I'm sure a lot of guys, even in the best places, they would go for a biopsy here and just leave it at that. But here, I can see this tumor plane. I mean, the tumor, not the plane. There's no plane at all. If you notice, there's no plane. But I can see the difference in the tissue. The difference in the tissue is what I can feel. And if you notice, there's not a single, there's not a single incidence of bipolarity. Because the bipolar ring will change that tissue, uh, you know, the, 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 the feel of the tissue is different after you bipolar it. And I just cannot afford it here. So it's under constant irrigation. And I'm taking this, which just touch, just touch the QSA. You see how I'm emptying it out? And I'm constantly using the electrophysiology to see about, I mean, I have SSCPs, but uh, obviously they will come into play only after I've destroyed something. So I cannot obviously depend on this continuous monitoring. So I have to keep, uh, I have to keep uh, doing, let's see. So I'm taking a lot of time. I'm skipping two to uh, 10 minute videos each. You can see how much. It's a bit scary, isn't it? Huh? Yes, sir. Guys. <laughs> it's, is it how the brainstem is getting emptied? And it's all by feel. Okay, under high magnification and feel. That, that's how this tumor is taken. And no hemostasis there, no hemostasis, meaning no bipolaring at all. See, I'm not using the normal tip, I'm using the barracuda. It's a very aggressive tip. But I'm using it 
not perpendicular to the brainstem. I'm using it parallel, literally parallel to the brainstem, shaving sub millimeters off. And feeling where the tumor is breaking. Yeah. So I'm seeing it's still tumor, still tumor going on. You see the hole in that brainstem? Can you see the thickness of the brainstem now? That that's the brainstem now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just look at it once. Get hemostasis there. Get it under control. Just, just irrigation. Hemostasis is just irrigation. Huh? Nothing else. No bipolaring inside. All right. So let's get to the next one. I'm skipping one more. My question to this case would be, how did you position the patient? How much of, uh, how much degree flexion of neck flexion did you? Not much, just prawn, just prawn position, just not much of neck flexion. Um, you know, it is underneath the tonsil, so I really don't uh, need too much. So, you know what I'm doing right now? Mm. I'm stimulating for motor tracks. Okay. And I know it's far away. And I can take further tumor. Irrigating. Seeing where the anterior boundary of the brainstem is. Stimulating again. Stimulating for 12th now. Stimulating for 9, 10, 11. And stimulating for motor, motor tracks. I've, I've cut underneath there and I'm going underneath there. That's into the medulla, lower medulla. Again, I can see tumor under high magnification. I'm going there, taking it out, shaving it out. So, now, guys, this is thrilling neurosurgery, isn't it? Definitely. It is, uh, it is very scary. It's crazy, right? Yes, I, I, I would like to know... Um, you said the tumor, uh, as we've seen also, it extended to the cervical part. So, Medullary. Uh, this I, is, I'm going into the medulla now. Can I, Can you see how I am preserving that part of the medulla and going underneath, underneath yeah. that, that superficial part of the medulla because I cannot cut through there. That is the nucleus ambiguous there underneath the fourth. That's the fourth ventricle floor there. Yeah. And I yeah. cannot, uh, that's the fourth ventricular floor. And I cannot uh, go through that. If I go through that, then I'll create 9, 10th, 11th. So what I'm doing is I'm following that tumor. I've already emptied out the tumor. I'm following that tumor into the fourth ventricular floor. Can you see that, what I'm doing? Can you see, yeah. guys? Yeah. Yes, probably. I'm finding out and I'm, I'm, I'm... The fourth ventricular floor, I'm keeping it in. And then whatever... Whatever tumor I'm seeing, I'm taking it out. This is quite radical. And again, I can tell you, there are very few guys in the world who would go this radical for a tumor like this. But what I wanted to show you is it's possible. It's, it's quite possible.
Now I'm going but to I show think, you. I think Dr. Frank had a question. Dr. Frank, did yeah. you want to ask? Yes, I, I wanted to know because the image shows that the tumor extends to the cervical portion. So I think uh, part of the C1 would have been uh, removed during the uh, opening of this car. So what, yes, what, what... yes. Not only part of C1, C2, entire C2 and top of C3 was removed. Okay. Midline so suboccipital this... craniotomy and then C1 and C2. So we, navig we navigated and we found out the complete extent of the tumor. And this tumor was uh, for that, the C1, C2, complete C2 was removed. And uh, up to C3, we had to expose. So this patient is cervical medullary. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now I'm going in again into the below the fourth ventricular floor because I can find the difference in the density there. So I'm going to take everything that is difference in density. I know that's tumor. And you must understand the crossing of the cortical, cortico, corticospinal fibers is at this level. The crossing, the crossing fibers are at this level. So what happens is you think they are on one side and this, this place they are crossing. So you've got to be very, very careful here. You should know the anatomy of the brainstem clearly. Now, I have done enough. You can see that gaping hole. Can you see that? Yes, guys, can you see the entire tumor out? Yeah. So that's that gaping hole. We navigated it and... Uh, we saw the extent of the tumor and we saw complete brainstem around. So normal brainstem uh, around. And how do you think the patient, post op patient is? I think the question would be first, uh, did you stabilize this patient for the cervical? There's no need. I mean, I'm taking only posterior C1 arch and uh, C2, uh, C1 arch posteriorly and C2 lamina. So there's no need for stabilization. Okay. I mean, but how do you think this patient is? Would be worried maybe has a neurological deficit because of the closeness or proximity to the brainstem. That's, yes, that's absolutely. our worry. Afsal, would you want to tell how this patient is, man? Um. Yes, sir. Or, so, uh, okay. My Indonesian fellows are also here. Would you like to tell how this patient uh, was? I mean... It's a, it's totally crazy surgery. If you see, I've gone for broke. I've completely gone. These patients are politically very important. They've gone to many places in India and they've consulted many places abroad and they were told that a complete removal is impossible. So we've really gone for broke here. Okay. And I would say it's, it's crazy. It's completely crazy. What I showed is not something that I want you to emulate straight away. But it's because of our 15 years in brainstem and in my like for brainstem. And we've had many disasters, but uh, this one obviously turned out to be very good. We've had just now, we've had another Dominican child from Dominicana, five-year-old child who's had another brainstem. Um, just uh, four months before, we had another one, which was very similar again, uh, but much more... Uh, uh, suckable and much more beautiful plane so that when that one we could completely remove it and uh, although people told it was diffuse uh, astrocytoma it we, we could take it out completely without any excuse, excuse me like that was dominica in the caribbean dominican in the caribbean so they oh, had come they to came us. all the way to uh, nepal not yeah man, nepal, not nepal india, man india, 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 india. Yeah, india. Yeah. wow it's a long way to come that's great yeah no, so uh, I would uh, I would want anybody. I mean, why, why don't you tell? I mean, my Indonesian fellows are also here. They're also in Karad, and Afsal is also in Karad. So you might, you guys have seen the patient. So how is the patient doing? Uh, it was great, sir. The patient directly expected the gag reflex is there, and the was very good. I was very surprised because the 
border is really not clear. It was a low grade diploma, but it was fantastic experience. And patient very good. <laughs> yes, yeah. very fantastic uh, operation that I think before the operation, I see, I think you will use something like fluorescent five ala or fluorescent, but you don't use it. Uh, but you do it perfectly, and I see the post operation very well. But I want to question, want to ask a question: Why don't use a, a fluorescent professor? Yeah, so uh, fluorescence can be sometimes misleading. Meaning, uh, uh, fluorescence in a glioma is okay, but in a brainstem tumor, if I make any mistake on fluorescence, then I don't, I'm not relying on my normal experience of 15 years and my normal sense and my feel. Um, this is a problem. When you have something, you suddenly depend on that. And I would like to depend more on the, the feel of this tumor, on the suction characteristics of this tumor, on my experience of how the brainstem looks like and how the brainstem behaves. I would rather be dependent on all these things than depend than be dependent on fluorescein and get distracted for that. And if uh, for some reason the fluorescein, uh, you know, the brainstem takes up a little bit of fluorescein and I go through that and then suddenly I'll find that, you know, I, I, I've uh, completely gone through the brainstem. So I would rather trust my all these years of experience and instincts than fluorescein. Did you see the question by Todd Neuro? How do you reconstruct the posterior column of the upper cer cervical vertebrae? Yeah, so we have to uh, go through the posterior column. So the, the tumor was involving the posterior column. So this was a ganglioglioma. It was reported as a ganglioglioma. So it's a low-grade tumor. It was involving the brainstem, literally. So the patient has posterior column symptoms, but that's the only symptom that the patient has. He's got grade five power. He's able to stand up, but he's got uh, gross posterior column uh, deficits. So, um, I mean, definitely, I mean, Todd Neuro was his question was quite possible and I mean, quite uh, sensible. And then the thing is, he's we we had posterior column. We have posterior column deficits for this guy. But I, 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 in my experience, what happens is in a in a matter of about uh, six months to one year, uh, the patient will kind of compensate for that. I have seen this many times and uh, they become much better. They'll try to use visual cues and uh, they'll they'll get much better. Sir, uh, the question was, uh, I think, about the stability of the vertebra. Uh, if, if we did the fusion on that. There's no need for fusion. So in this case, you're taking a C1 uh, arch, not even, you know, a few centimeters of the C1 arch and only the C2 lamina and it's a midline approach, there's no need for any fusion or there is no question of instability. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Any other comments? I see Harsh here. So. Hi, hi. Yeah, Harsh, tell me. Uh, excellent. As always. Thank Just, you. Sir. Uh, uh, one question about the this brainstem glioma, or when on MRI you see a diffuse glioma, brainstem glioma involving pons, medulla, and midbrain, what you suggest or what do you suggest to your patient, or, or how do you decide that yes, you should go for a surgery in this patient? Yeah, so um, see the diffuse glioma. I, I've operated uh, quite a few of them. I mean, uh, the diffuse gliomas are bad. I mean, uh, I'm sure everybody agrees to that. The diffuse gliomas, when it's involving the midbrain, pons, and medulla, <laughs> and there is no normal brainstem seen on T2 weighted. It's just edematous and there is not really any plain seen. I've stopped operating them. I mean, I never used to listen to people and I used to operate them and the results are not so great. But on the other hand, I can tell you, Hirsch, take this from me. There were some of them which I thought was diffuse. I mean, I'll show you a video on YouTube. Uh, there is a YouTube video, dorsal exophytic uh, brainstem. 
and it there was literally no plane on the imaging. We went ahead and operated it. We had beautiful plane. But this is one of the very few uh, brain stems because you, over a few years, you get overconfident and then you create disasters. So we've had a few of them. And I would say that if it's completely diffuse, crossing every plane and you really don't see a normal brainstem on the MRI, on T2-weighted and on contrast, now I would be a bit worried going uh, going after them. I mean, I think even Charlie doesn't go after them right now. So Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, so. I, I had some patient and he had also seen that and he refused to do anything. Yeah. And so most of the people, yeah, he said, he, oh, forget it, don't do anything. He's not even biopsy. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I've been extremely a, aggressive. You know, exophytic. Yeah. No, I, generally, in my yes, practice. Very good cystic, yes. No, but this was the, the tumor that I just showed was, you know, there was, uh, on contrast, there was a plane, but otherwise, there was no plane at all. There was literally no plane. And you saw on surgery, there was no plane at all. Absolutely nothing as such. You know, it was visually, it was incomprehensible. It was just by the feel. So here I was operating just by the feel of it and uh, nothing else. We took out the whole thing just by the feel of it. So um, what I'm saying is there's a lot of tumors which people say would be inoperable. I wouldn't agree to that. But on the other no. hand, as you ask me if some some of these lesions are disasters. I mean, the thing is, you create a, a patient who would be on the ventilator and who would never come out. You know that that that's that that happens too. And again, one of the things I can tell you is a lot of uh, guys don't operate on cavernomas, uh, and this is absolute sin. Um, cavernomas, every single cavernoma of the brainstem can be taken out. How much ever bad it looks, you see how I went into the brainstem here. And if you know uh, how we go into the brainstem, all these cavernomas, every single cavernoma, we've, we've taken some completely crazy cavernomas all the way from midbrain to thalamus. It can be taken out. So anybody who says cavernomas cannot be taken out is wrong. So uh, what I want is to redefine the boundary. Actually. It's, uh, it's, it's just, uh, um, you know, that that redefining for the youngsters is what I want. I mean, all those old people, the old generation telling us that, you no, know, I had my teachers telling me, no, 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 don't go for this. It's crazy. Then you have to question it. You have to push yourself. Of course, you will fall. There's no question. When Whenever somebody senior tells you don't do this and you do that, it's certain thing that you will fall. But what is better, what is the best thing about it is that you will learn by your fall. And you will learn how much you can push it. Okay? So that's the thing. James and has a question. James, you have a question you want to ask, I? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Well, I, I could ask it if you want, James. Can you go ahead and ask it, James? Okay. Thank you, Professor, for the explanation. My, my question will be, on your dissection of this tumor from above, how do you, what are the landmarks we use to identify, I mean, the depth of the fourth ventricle, how, how far you are from the floor of the fourth ventricle? Yeah, so the floor of the fourth ventricle is a complete visual landmark. You know, you, uh, you see the floor of the fourth ventricle, you... Hello? Yes, we can hear. Go ahead. Yeah, so when you elevate the tonsils, you're going to see the telovillar interface, and then you know where the fourth ventricle is going to be. You see the pica, th that will help you to identify the fourth ventricle. So there's a lot of things that, I mean, you would want to, but here, this, this is tumor. You really don't want to get into the fourth ventricle, through the fourth ventricle into this tumor. That's going to be a disaster. Because if you see the diamond shape of the fourth ventricle, the lower part of the diamond is the nucleus ambiguous. And if you go through that, you're going to create an arrest for this patient. Okay. Moment you go with the CUSA into that space, you're going to create an arrest. Okay. And you're going to 
you're going to create 9, 10, 11 palsy and uh, you're going to create breathing disturbances. You're going to create uh, cardiac disturbances. And it, it's, it's not really worth it. So you have the vagal nuclei, the hypoglossal nuclei, all there. And you really don't want to go there. So what you want to do in a case like this is you go to the tumor and then underneath, you can see where the tumor extends and then go underneath this floor of the fourth ventricle and take out tumor. But not through that. It'll be crazy. That's exactly what I did. I mean, I, I showed you what I was doing, right? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Ahead, I do operate only in. Uh, sorry, I. Go ahead. Go ahead yeah, tell, tell me, Harsh. You, you are now only doing under exoscope or everything? Everything under exoscope. I uh, I'm in love with the exoscope. The kind of seems, magnification. Yeah, I can so... make out here uh, because. The movements can show that this is an exoscope which is working rather than microscope. Yeah, so I don't use the microscope at all now. So yeah, I can work on. So everything is under the exoscope. I mean, yesterday mm -hmm. I told you the rupture. We had a rupture. It was completely under the exoscope. We had no issues at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, my yes. my fellows were there. They were watching the rupture, and uh, you know, we had absolutely no issues at all with the. Uh, Controlling anything. Yeah, good training. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I, okay. I, uh, I, I think, think we'll call uh, it a day, guys. Well, yeah, I think Juma has a, a case he wants to present very briefly. Yes, yes. yes. One of the go ahead, go ahead, Juma, please. Frank, uh, fr uh, Frank, well, uh, can, well, you, can you please mm -hmm. go ahead? Go ahead, Frank. Yes. Let me share this uh, quick presentation to yeah, you guys. Please introduce yourself. Well, my, my, my name is Frank Patrick, uh, uh, and I'm a resident uh, at the uh, Mwimbili Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Institution. And currently we have uh, have this case. It's quite a challenging case, and we, we just want the way out. And this is the case of a three-year-old female had presented with a right-sided fascial weakness and abnormal gait for two years, and also has recurrent episodes of nausea and vomiting for two weeks history of weight loss, had no difficulty in breathing or choking. And on examination, this child is uh, 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 alert and pupils were equal, reactive and round, and reactive to light and accommodation. Had uh, normal hemodynamic status, and the child is ambulant. And he, clinically, she, she is very well, except for that uh, right side of the weakness. And on CNS, the speech is normal, had right eye ptosis, and weakness of the left lower face, uh, which is revealed by mouth deviation to the right side. In other system, it was uneventful. This is the uh, MRI uh, of this child. And it shows that the, the, there's a, there's a uh, this is T, T, T1 image showing the tumor occupying the medulla. It has a, um, it has uh, uh, mixed the intensity uh, and match on the center. And yes, it, it seems to have a very good, uh, seem to have a, a, a regular shape. And we thought this is a, a brainstem glioma. And currently this patient is receiving a, a radiotherapy. So we would like to, would like to, to, to have your your view on how we can uh, we can go forward to this patient. So, so she has done some metastatic workup. Total spine MRI was normal, and uh, lumbar puncture was also reported by normal findings. So we really wish uh, to hear from you what we can do next to this patient, Professor Ibn. And that is the case. Guys? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. I'm here. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to say, show the same tumor to you. I mean, okay. what you have shown. 
Can you, yes. if you stop sharing the screen, and I'm going to show you the same tumor to you, okay. what you Maybe. just showed. Let me stop sharing. Yeah. Yes, now. Now I'm going to share my screen. And... Uh, um, You remember the video that you, I mean, you remember the scan that you showed, uh, Frank? Yes. Yes, I remember. So now, just look at this scan. And I'll, uh, it's exactly the same. Can you see yeah, that? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. They're the same. Yeah. <laughs> so, the same scan. See that? Yeah, yeah. Kaju? Kaju, eh? You, can you take your phone, please? Can you see the scan? It's exactly the similar, isn't it? Yes, I'm seeing the scan. They're quite similar. <laughs> yeah. So, see, but this is much more extensive. This is much more extensive, okay? Yeah. So, we're going to see how that tumor was removed. Again, I went very radical. Harsh is around here. Yes, I am here. Yeah, so I want to show you this image. So you see, this is looking like it is infiltrating. You see, there is not really much of medulla here. Can you see that? Yeah. The cervical spinal cord is okay, but you see there is edema here. So I'm going to open in the midline. And uh, of course, disconnect. This is pilocytic, so a lot of vessels going into the tumor from the pica. Disconnect that. So keep on removing the tumor, decompress. Decompress, decompress. Using the bipolar on my left hand and then suction on my right. Keeping on decompression, taking the cystic part out. Now, again, here there is no electrophysiology. I'm not using any electrophysiology here. Unlike uh, the previous case, it is very cervical medullary and there is no distinction. Here I have very good distinction. My feel for the tumor, uh, I have. You know, you are coming to the OBEX now. Yeah. I'm taking out all that tumor. Going very radical. Afsal, you're seeing, man? Afsal? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. yeah, I'm here. I'm watching. Some, yeah. yeah, you see how radical I'm going. All that tumor is being taken out. This is probably some five, six years back. And you can see, getting to see the obex there. You can see, take out all this. I mean, the obex, you can 
uh, whatever underneath the opex, you can go ahead and take it out. And then now you will see the brainstem. Can you see the cervical cord and how that is bent down? That is completely bent down. Only very thin layer of brainstem. Can you see that? Can you see that? The cervical, yeah. if you saw 3D, you will understand that. This is this is the depths. This is very superficial. It has gone to the depths completely. Can you see that? And see the brainstem there. It's literally so thin. Literally so thin. I'm showing people how thin the brainstem is. I've taken out all this tumor. Everything. Radical removal. You know what? This boy works in a bank. Now, wow. another 21-year-old uh, chap came to us. So you can see that's the anterior limit. I'm just showing them the anterior limit. And this is this is how the, the brainstem is buckling down. Okay? The brainstem is buckling down, literally. Because the fourth ventricle roof, everything is gone. So that's tumor. And I'm you will see the post-op scan now. You may think there is no brainstem, but this guy started walking from the third day onwards. And right now, the guy is working in a bank happily. <laughs> so, and I'm going and removing the last bits on the roof. Seeing the fourth ventricle completely. We really go for Brock in these tumors. I mean, so you ask me what is uh, my impression of your tumor. You see now what's happening? See? Yeah. We took out all that. So C2, um, C2 arch also we have taken. And uh, I guess that's answered your question, right? Yes, but um, you have been to Tanzania and you know our situation in terms of resources. And I've seen you using um, Accusa. Do you, do you think we can manage uh, to excise the whole of this tumor without um, Accusa? Uh, you don't need Accusa. You just need a pituitary forceps. So when I started off uh, my brainstem surgeries, I was not having Accusa. So you need to fix the, you need, you cannot have a lot of movement of the brainstem. So uh, what you need to do is you need to fix the brainstem with a patty and use a sharp biting to just bite off the tumor and when you're sure of that. And it, uh, well, I've seen you have a brain, you have a, uh, I'm, I've just come to Tanzania and operated. And yeah. uh, if you saw, we did uh, quite a large tuberculum cell meningioma, you remember? Yes, I remember, I remember. You were with me on that surgery? I wasn't there, but I was watching. That side, yeah. Right, so the tuberculum cell meningioma, what that we removed in Tanzania was quite large and we did it through an eyebrow approach, right? So that is something the best places would be, I mean, would do. So infrastructure is not really very important. If you have a suction, if you have a bipolar, if you have a microscope, that's enough. Don't look beyond that. Cusa is just a frill. I mean, it's it's good to have it, but if you don't have it, you always have your pituitary uh, biting forceps. You need to stabilize your brainstem and bipolar dis. I mean, by manual dissection and uh, no bipolar, just irrigation and keep on taking it out. And uh, you can take it out. I'm sure. Okay. Thanks a lot. Anything else? So uh, I'm glad that I was able to show one more uh, of these brain stems uh, because your case came up. All right, uh, Harsh, Afsal, uh, my Indonesian fellows, anybody, any questions? I think there's a question from Dr. Mte. We are together yeah. here in the... In uh, so the Professor, uh, am I Dr. Mte? Um... Yes, what's your question? Oh, Two questions. Yeah. Yeah. One is uh, this patient has have some um received some radiotherapy and therapy. Yeah. Do you still 
advise us to go for surgery. That is one. Yeah. And second is um second case that you presented, I saw you use the bipolar. Yeah. Hello? Like um thinking uh, uh why you why did you use the bipolar for this second case? Yeah, so uh, in the second case, I'm kind of very clear as to where the uh, tumor is and where the brainstem is. I'm, I'm very, very confident. So, uh, and I know the bipolar spread. And when I know these three factors, then I can use a bipolar. I can even use a bomb on it. Okay, if I know how much is the spread, where is my brainstem, where is my tumor? So, if I knew tumor, brainstem and spread, I can use anything on it. Okay, uh, there's no problem. Only when you don't know, like in the first case, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not very sure as to where is this tumor going to end and where's the brainstem going to start. I'm not very sure about it. And here, the second case, the tumor, this is, these are tumors, these are pilocytic tumors, pilocytic astrocytomas. And uh, they have a very, very different, uh, uh, pro I mean, properties from the brainstem. So you can afford to use the bipolar if, uh, and plus they're very vascular. And uh, so you can afford to use your bipolar. So as Bruce Lee says, uh, you must be like water, my friend. Okay. So there is nothing religious about it. Uh, but when you're close to the, close to the brainstem, no bipolar. That's a common dictum that you should follow. If you don't follow, you'll have, you'll have problems. I have followed I have not followed that also, and I have had problems. So you don't want to do that. Okay, hey, very good. Juma, are you there? Are you there, Juma? Yeah, yeah, thank you. But uh, I have the, the second question that for this patient, uh, okay. they're three years old. She's already received chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Are you still advise us to go for surgical trauma. resection? Would you hear that? I <laughs> could only hear that, right? Can you either write that, uh, Juma, or so, try so it again? I, I would paraphrase what uh, he has Okay, to say. go ahead. He's, go ahead. So he's just asking. Uh, this child had, had already received uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So is, do, do you still think we should uh, operate on this child? And uh, if yes, maybe at what time uh, after receiving the chemotherapy we should wait till we operate? Hello? You're muted. I can you hear? Oh, hold on. Profit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can, okay, fine. Tell me. So the question was um, this patient had already received the chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Yeah. So at the moment, we, we were afraid if we, we go in with the surgery because of the, we might face challenges such as fibrosis and we couldn't maybe operate because of that. So if that is the case, um, do you still think we should operate? And if yes, maybe until when we should, uh, uh, we should operate uh, from chemo radiotherapy? My advice to young neurosurgeons like you is unless you face a problem, Okay, don't experience it. Don't experience the problem before you face it. That's exactly what happens to a lot of guys. You, I mean, you you worry, well, what will happen if I do this? What will happen if you do this? I mean, see, that way you're never going to learn. You're never going to understand. The only way to learn is go face it. And if anybody says that, Radiotherapy creates an issue. Yes, they are right. It The differentiation will be a le little less. The fibrosis will be a bit more, but you can do it. It's not like you can, you cannot do it. You can. So, and anybody who says you shouldn't do it will never figure out how that is, how that is done. Okay. So my advice to you is go do it. This patient doesn't have a meaningful survival if you're not doing anything. Patient already had radio and RT and chemo. What else can you offer? So 
the best that you can offer is surgery. And if you're careful about it, I've seen you guys' skills. And when I was in Tanzania, I saw the skills of the, you guys. You're not so bad. Uh, and I, I would say that some of you are pretty good. The guys who were assisting me was very good. So obviously, you got skills. You just have to stop worrying and uh, about what will happen and just go do it. That's all. That's the only way you can go forward. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, I, uh, I guess uh, Shuma has no, no more presentation or anything else like that, right, Shuma? I don't believe he does. So I guess, right, thanks for your time. And thanks. Thanks, guys. Hope. Thank you, guys. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay. I hope I Thank changed you, your perspective on brainstem. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for your time, Mike. And thanks, everyone, for coming. Yeah. See you guys. See you. Yeah. See you.